I've been to see her. She looks a lot like you. Who are you? <laughs> I'm all that's left. Or maybe I'm all that ever was. I meant your name. My name means no importance. What about you? Do you remember your true name? My name is... Yours will be criticizing me. Ours will be criticizing you. Ours will be harder on myself. You'll never know how I truly have felt. Makes you want to say, this thing really, really does suck ass. Makes you want to say, even things from the past. Makes you want to say, this is the worst thing I have seen. Makes you want to say, what the fuck, Marine? 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 Oh, hey. It's been a while, I think. Uh, you must be wondering, you know, what I've been doing since I'm a big bad Keyblade Builder now. Well, I've been hitting the bugs to work on my magic. Merlin is far gone by now. And it's getting kind of hard to get a hang of it. Anyway, last time we played Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix. It took me a whole month to beat it and gather my thoughts. As a game as iconic as Kingdom Hearts, Square Enix had to outdo themselves before making another numbered title. So enter Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. This game was a Game Boy Advance game and basically had the same worlds with the exception of Twilight Town. This introduced Organization 13, and now my biggest pain in my fucking ass. Basically, Malusha planned to overthrow the organization with the help of Larkseen and Vexen, I think. But Axel came by and axed all of their plans and saved the organization. Meanwhile, Sora is going through the castle Oblivion, and when Axel defeats the member, so does Sora. He also runs into a replica of Riku, where a girl named Namine is rewriting his memories, and it gets kind of muddy at this point. Basically, the too long didn't read version is, Sora beat the organization members and was placed in cryo sleep like the Spartan he is. While Namine tries to fix his memories, she fucked up. Now, most players played Kingdom Hearts 1 and not Chain of Memories, so the mystery of Sora's memory loss was, well, a mystery. But what if you never played Kingdom Hearts 1 either? What if the mystery was the main thing, which it kinda is, if, well, let me get this straight. Imagine how lost you would be if you had zero knowledge. You'd be like, what's a Keyblade? Who's Sora? Why is Roxas having dreams about him? Who's Ansem? Who's Axel? And why do we switch characters three hours into the game when I was just now feeling the angst of Roxas as if I was him? That's how I experienced Kingdom Hearts 2. I played this game when it came out back in 2005. I was around eight years old. Crash Bandicoot was my main game. Plus, I played Halo on my original Xbox. Yes, I had a PS2, but other than GTA at the time, I barely played it. But back then, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Why was Donald, Goofy, and Mickey Mouse on the cover of this anime game? I didn't want to hype it up too much. But just like picking up any other good-ass game, it changes your life forever. Kingdom Hearts 2 to be honest, how do I do this game the justice it deserves? Kingdom Hearts 1 was the first of its kind, and when they were making Kingdom Hearts 2, they had to go back to the drawing board. New tech, a new camera angle, and new combat abilities. As I explained earlier, this game was shrouded in mystery from the very beginning. You're first introduced to a kid named Roxas. You spend the next week with him and his friends Hainer, Pence, and Alette. It seems like the town is mad at them for stealing photos. But here's the thing, when they say photos, it's censored. Uh, oh no! They're gone! Our... are gone! Uh, 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 what? All are... gone? Huh? 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 You can't say, why not? The fact that somebody's stealing the word too is crazy. 
Like when I was a kid, I didn't understand what was happening. You left the hangout call at the usual spot and do some tutorial things to get introduced to reaction commands. And hands down the best mechanic of any Kingdom Hearts game due to how flashy and easy it is to use. But we'll get into that later. Anyways, you meet up with the rival gang, I guess there's some other kids from their school or something. But the main person from that group is Cypher. He's an asshole, and guess what? He's a Final Fantasy character from the Final Fantasy VIII. Plus, Vivi is here too, another Final Fantasy character. So the entire rival game is just made of these Final Fantasy characters. But that's besides the point. Cypher thinks you took the photos. Then you fight him as a tutorial. Picking up a weapon here adds plus one to your strength, defense, or magic. And shapes your leveling, I think. You fight Cypher, then... A thing comes up out of nowhere after you take a victory photo. You then follow it to attempt to fight it, but it's no use. You are then granted a Keyblade. You beat it and then the photo pops out I guess. The Twilight Town gang catches up to Roxas and then Roxas says they were just laying there, which isn't true, the enemy had them. So they noticed that all the pictures were of Roxas. So that's why everyone thought it was them that took them. Another cutscene plays, and it's this weird red guy and an Organization 13 guy. They discuss the nobodies, the white jumpsuit motherfuckers, and they were trying to steal the real Roxas but was confused, so they stole photographs. This is ironic because the game suspected this a moment prior. Roxas has a dream about Sora and the Keyblade, and the second day ensues. Look, I can recap the entirety of Roxas' time in Twilight Town, but that ended up to be a whole episode of itself, considering the intro is three and a half fucking hours long. A long intro. But anyways, here's the clip note. Roxas keeps having dreams about Sora and his friends from Kingdom Hearts 1. After running to nominate, he takes a visit to the Station Awakening and fights a giant nobody. He participates in a fighting tournament where Axel comes in. You fight Axel since Roxas has no memory of him. You win the tournament. Roxas falls off the clock tower and his heart gets connected to Kairi, thus connected to Sora. You explore the seven wonders of Twilight Town and watch the magic ghost train. Roxas speaks with Nominee about who he is a little bit. Roxas wakes up the next day and he can't interact with anyone. Axel shows up and then time freezes. Diz, the red guy, tells Roxas to go to the mansion. Roxas talks with Nominee and she says he'll become whole. It's revealed that Roxas has been in simulation this entire time. He has a fit and breaks the computer in rage. And you fight Axel in a good goddamn boss fight. You then find Donald and Goofy and the saddest scene of this game plays. Sora. You're lucky. Looks like my summer vacation is over. Three hours in, and you're just now seeing the title screen. What the fuck? Overall, Roxas' summer vacation with Hannah Pence and Olette was something he enjoyed, but it was all fake. He just wanted to enjoy his normal life with his friends. And thanks to this and Organization 13, that normal life was never meant to be. He was fucked from the very beginning. Thanks a lot, Sora. Fucking asshole. There are still things I must mention before we move on. Axel is Roxas' friend, but we kind of barely understand that. And some Seeker of Darkness is back and working with Diz. Roxas fought Riku and seemingly won while he was in the organization. Why? Why do you have the Keyblade? Shut up! All this leads up to the return of Sora, Donald, and Goofy, where the last thing they remember is the end of Kingdom Hearts 1. Like I said, they don't remember Chain of Memories or anything that happened in it. This is ironic because most of the player base didn't play Chain of Memories because it was a Game Boy Advance game. But just like the first game, Sora goes on a journey across Disney World. He revisits some such as Olympus, Halloween Town, Agrabah, and even fucking Atlantica. But the big thing here is that you just don't go to each world once, you go to them twice. See, the first visit is usually Pete messing around with some heartless trying to take over the world with darkness, 
because Maleficent is back and he's her lackey. The second visit is usually the organization messing around and doing some things with the nobodies. Their main goal is to make Kingdom Hearts with the freed hearts of the Heartless, and the only way to free those hearts is with the Keyblade. Again, recapping all the Disney Worlds, especially for two visits, would be here all season, changing to gameplay once again. Like I said earlier, the game's engine was remade from the ground up with new summons, new abilities, and now new drive forms. There are Valor, Wisdom, Limit, Master, and Final drive forms, and these give new buffs and abilities based on the form. Valor is fast and do wields Keyblades. Wisdom lets you shoot magic and bust magic attacks. Master is the best of both of those worlds. Lemmy goes back to the roots of Kingdom Hearts 1 and uses the Kingdom Hearts 1 movesets with the help of the reaction command. And the final form is a godlike anime form. It's it's just awesome. Floating around, floating Keyblades, buff magic and strength. A vicious combo to boot. It's, it's just great. Now you're wondering, if I have these forms, what's stopping me from using them all the time? Well, first of all, you must have juice in the drive gates to do it. If you spam it, you go into anti-form, and it just happens from time to time anyways. You don't not want to use them though. You need to level them up so you unlock base abilities for base Sora to make him stronger. Abilities have even more emphasis here, and the shortcuts of magic are very limiting, only gaining one slot from Kingdom Hearts 1. It sucks because there's a lot of magic to use here. Magic got an overhaul with the bar changing to a big solid one from a segmented one. Although it's hard to gauge how much a spell uses now. The only thing you really have to look out for is if the text is yellow. If you use a yellow text spell on your MP, you'll go into recharge. When it's recharging, some abilities will proc, like Berserk or Drive Boost, I think. Berserk makes your combos never end and thus never having finishers. Drive Boost will charge the drive gauge more efficiently. The issue with Berserk though is that you have to finish bosses with a finisher or a spell like Thunder. If you have preserved proc and you're fighting the boss, you fuck. You, you can't finish them. Although this never happened to me during this playthrough. With all that and building Sora, Donald, and Goofy, this is a crazy change from Kingdom Hearts 1. Choosing what limits to have over support abilities, what combos you want, it gets really in depth. Also, they lock dodge roll behind a level up from limit form. And that is so bad, dude. Like, what the fuck? How do you have guard but not a dodge roll? Another highlight of the game is the reaction commands. And it's better if I just show you. Holy hot damn, that is fucking awesome. Another upgrade is the gummy ship missions. They're actually fun to play and have some difficulty to them. They do feel like a shoot 'em up. Unlike Kingdom Hearts 1, you do need to level up your ship if you want to stand a chance, cause it gets crazy. The enemies face fit the theme of the game. They look like heartless and nobodies in ship form. It's a world of difference than this. Something new is Pride Lands. You play as Lion Sora, which is very cool and interesting. It makes you think, how were they able to do this? What is funny, they changed Donald into a bird and Goofy into a turtle. Now, this is where I say something bad about the game. Uh, well, nothing. Absolutely fucking nothing. Okay. Maybe I'm exaggerating a bit. Some bosses from the second visit go on a little too long or just plain out annoying. One that comes to mind is the Curse Heartless from the Pirate's second visit. You must have all 
822 medallions in the chest to do damage to the boss. If not, he just drops magic orbs. The only way to force him to drop gold is to use Blizzard or the Reaction Command. On his last bit of health, he then swallows all 822 coins and you have to slowly get them back. That fucking sucks. Another thing is Atlantica. Do you remember how bad a maze Atlantica was in Kingdom Hearts 1? With the shitty underwater controls and not knowing where to go? It was a nightmare, but what if I told you it's worse here? It's a quick time event singing simulator. Yeah, it's cool seeing Sora sing Little Mermaid songs, but after you sing a song, you have to come back later with the listed ability to continue the world. What a load of shit. What? Why even include Atlantica at all? At least this time, it follows the movie with the Prince Eric plot. But there's no Heartless or nobodies in the world. In fact, this world is only one room. And on top of all that, if I remember correctly, half the movies take place on land. So why couldn't that be the world? What were they thinking? Thinking! Remember how I said a couple seconds ago every world in Kingdom Hearts 1 was a maze or something like that? Well, the map design here is far more linear. To many, that is a good thing. But to some, this holds back the explorability. Most chests aren't really hidden, and for the second visit, they only last 30 minutes or so depending on the world. So, the world design is an upgrade and a downgrade at the same time. Okay, let's back up a bit and go back to the story. After the first visit to the world, you go back to Twilight Town, cause Kari ends up there and the gang tells Sora about it. It turns out Axel kidnapped her. Thanks Axel. You go to Hall of Bastion, then meet King Mickey. You find out Ansem Seeker of Darkness is actually Xehanort's Heartless and his nobody is in this, the leader of Organization 13. On your way to help the Final Fantasy characters, you run into Dennis. And this fight is what killed a lot of playthroughs for many children, mine included. Earlier, you did a minigame with Dimnix in the Underworld, but not only do you do that here, you must actually fight him. The fight was so hard for a kid like me back in the day, but after finding out the reaction command, it helps out a lot. It's easy. Doofy then fucking dies by getting hit by a rock. You then fight with each Final Fantasy character up to the point where Goofy wakes up and says he's alright. Thanks, Goofy. The second visit also holds the epic A Thousand Heartless Battle. It's a technological marvel that the PS2 could do that back in the day. Although, it's just the same two enemies over and over and over again, but that doesn't ruin the epicness of it. To put it plainly, this is peak Kingdom Hearts. And it's a shame we didn't get something like this in Kingdom Hearts 3. If Twilight Town was more fleshed out like it is in this game, it would have been a perfect stage for such things. Although the Keyblade Graveyard's intro was an okay supplement to it, but doesn't hit the same with all the Final Fantasy characters and the difficult boss fight. Later on, you run into Zaldin, a Lancer. His fight is so fucking hard. This is where the secret mechanic of the game is finally used. King Mickey. See, during select boss fights during the second visit, you'll get an option, don't give up, and you'll play as King Mickey. The point is to charge the drive gauge so you can fully heal Sora. But during the Zaldin boss fight, it's practically impossible. If Mickey runs out of health, you go back to playing as Sora whether or not his health is fully healed or not. And it's kind of bad from there on out. If you're not leveled up properly, you're fucked. You have to go around and grind around Beast's castle just to stand a chance against this dude. And, you know, this makes me think, what does the organization members do while they're not going around collecting hearts? Well, according to 358 Days Over 2, they have days off. So, what the fuck are they doing in their off time? Huh. Oh! Hey, Anthony! <laughs> How's the desk job working out for ya? It's slow, and what do you think? Nobody even comes here. Why do we have this stupid position? Well, <laughs> you know, we did get a new recruit the other day. Well, the other night or whatever. And, you know, it can't all be useless, right? There has to be a way to recruit new members. Wait a minute. What are you doing? Oh, me? <laughs> I'm enjoying my day off. You have a day off? Uh, duh, we all do. Well, I was never told of this. 
well, maybe if you didn't sleep till 5 p.m. every day and join our meetings, you, you'd know. Okay. What are you doing or what do you do on your day off? Oh, me? <laughs> I go to WWE shows. Let me take a drink real quick. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to WrestleMania in April. And let me tell you, it was awesome. See, Rhea Ripley retained her title. I went to WrestleMania? Oh, and didn't invite me? Or whatever. I could have a day off this entire time. Mentioned. Logan Paul, Wait a minute. I show speed fight, what if I uh, call or whatever, what, uh, I, You know, they didn't fight, but, you know, I show speed was in the bottle. And so, um, I'm not feeling too good. Uh, oh, yeah? Yeah, I think I need to take the rest of the day off. Oh, I get it, I get it. You know what? How about we just leave? Yeah. Yeah, that that sounds like a good idea. Definitely, definitely. You know, I'll just get Tony to come with your shift. And we can go get some chili spaghetti, some chili cheese fries, some cheese conies, you know, the good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Oh, one last thing before we go. Uh, you want to know something? What? Yeah, it's all of our days off. You've been making playlists over time for the past six hours, and I just came down here to tell you that. Sorry about that. So does this mean we're all going to Kingdom Cody's? <laughs> of course, let's go! Alright, let's go. Alright, final stretch. After you go through all the Disney worlds, you go back to Twilight Town and head to the mansion. You run into Hainer, Pence, and Alette, and they tell you they think it's a copy of their town because there's copies of one-of-a-kind objects such as the crystals and Alette's pouch. So you then go into the mansion and travel to the copy of Twilight Town, which has a portal to the infantry realm of sorts. You fight with Axel to take on nobodies. He uses a powerful attack and he fades away, and as he's fading away, he says that the organization took Kyrie. Sword Donald and Goofy and Mickey go forth into the world that never was. You go forth and you get stopped by some nobodies. You didn't have to fight Roxas's lingering will. It's one of the more difficult fights in the game. This fight is a Final Mix exclusive. I remember looking at videos of the fight back in the day. At first, I thought it was a mod, but after a while, we did eventually get this fight in the States thanks to the remix remasters. This fight canonically still doesn't make sense to me. I thought Roxas was returned to Sora back in Twilight Town at the beginning of the game, right? So, how is he here? Anyway, after you beat him, you move into the castle and make your way to Zigbar. This fight took me a couple tries, but with their use of dry forms and limits, it's easy enough, I guess. You then run to Ansem and Kairi. Sora and Kairi share a much deserved hug, and Kairi tells you it's Riku and not Ansem Seeker of Darkness. Throughout the game, Riku was dropping hints that he was okay. We all move on and fight Luxord and then Syax. Sora finds out that Roxas is his nobody, and the reason Riku looks like Ansem is that he had to become Ansem to defeat Roxas. Remember from earlier? If it changes me forever. Accepted it. They run into Diz, who's been revealed to be Ansem the Wise. He's trying to calculate the power of Kingdom Hearts or something, but the machine explodes and turns Riku back to normal. You then climb to the top of the castle. You fight the first face of Zimnus. He then unleashes the power of Kingdom Hearts and disappears. Then, just like Kingdom Hearts 1, the door to darkness appears. From this point forward, it's the end game. You then run through, cut through buildings while Xemnas throws them at you. You then mess up the engines of this dragon ship thing. You go and destroy the core as well. You then fight Xemnas in Xehanort's armor from Dark Road. Then it all seems to be over. There's a special moment with nominating Roxas, and everyone except for Riku and Sora gets to go home because they get interrupted by another flying dragon. 
Riku and Sora used a glider to fight this dragon. And this part was really hard for me back in the day. I got stuck here for a while. Then you're in a zero gravity room and fight Armored Zimnus again. Then the final fight in the realm of nothingness. You and Riku fight Zimnus to the death. Zimnus traps Sora. Then you have to play as Riku to save Sora. Then after that, Zimnus summons... Oh... Holy shit! You have to tap Y and A to deflect a million blaster bullets! They then go to the Dark Shores, they receive a message in a bottle from Kairi from the beginning of the game, and the door to light leads them back home. They're reunited with everyone else at the Destiny Islands, and that is the game. So that is Kingdom Hearts 2. The funny thing is, if this game didn't succeed, this would have been the final Kingdom Hearts game. Tetsuya Nomura didn't expect this to be the big franchise that it is now. This game holds a very special place in my heart, no pun intended. The way that this game plays is nearly perfect, and to many, this is the best Kingdom Hearts game. Although my favorite is still Kingdom Hearts 3, I can't deny the greatness that is Kingdom Hearts 2. Like I said, it's not perfect. There are some flaws that hold this game back from being the greatest game of all time. However, those mistakes barely hinder Kingdom Hearts 2. Now, there's talks of a Kingdom Hearts adaptation over at Disney going on right now, and oh boy, let's hope it's a good one. I remember back when I first beat this game, I cried. I never beat a game this big, and the ending was perfect for a conclusion for the series at that point. But there were some questions like, who's Xehanort? And what did Xehanort and Anthem the Wise do back then? What were their research? Well, that's a whole convoluted story within itself, considering- Marine Man, you've been summoned. We recruited a new member of the organization. You're not gonna believe who it is. Oh, come on, who could have possibly- Who could have been? Jamie. What?